The harp has been portrayed throughout history as an instrument of angels. Its sound is both mystical and spiritual. But for classically trained Turkish harpists, Şirin Pancarolu, the instrument is anything but ethereal. Her life's work is focused on making earthly connections, on communicating with her audience and encouraging unity. It's a very, uh, although it looks like an instrument for uh, angels, I think that it's a very earthly instrument. You have a huge connection with, uh, with the ground. The sound is the sound of maybe of water, uh, maybe of drops, you know, raindrops. My teacher invited me to her house where I saw a harp from close up for the first time. It was a gold harp. Pluck some strings. And I really felt like this kind of sound, very penetrating, but without any intrusion. I'm a rather curious person. And so uh, music really incites curiosity and, and invites you to be even more curious and, and explore. It's history at the same time. It's, uh, you know, it's history of humankind, but recorded in a different way. So, when you play a piece that was, you know, maybe composed 200, 300 years ago, or sometimes even older, you get an idea about what, how people were thinking in terms of um, sounds, how they put it, that these sounds together. It's a huge channel for communication if you can be really sort of in harmony with that. So I really find a way of, um, it's a way of thinking really, I think. Uh -huh. It's a way of thinking without words and, with, and that really, really sort of, it corresponds to some basic need, I think, in our hearts and minds. I go back and forth between being um, a performer on stage and an audience member uh, and this, this listening part, this, uh, this communication that goes through the listening, it's, it is something that's very, very soothing, uh, you know, it's again a way of communicating without talking. I think it really enhances the experience for me, not to be there to the performer to show what he or she can do, but um, we're there to sort of... Uh, Find the music that's in the universe. Well, I'm also searching for it, just like a, a member of the audience. As she keeps her feet on the ground, internationally acclaimed Turkish harpist Şirin Pancarola explores many sounds and themes, from classical Turkish music to tango. To talk about her latest endeavours and her music in general, she joins me now in the studio. Hello and welcome. Good to have you here oh, on thank Showcase. Thank you. Likewise. Uh, I want to begin by talking about your latest album, which was released this year, Eternal Love. Mm -hmm. What yes. drew you to Sufi music? Uh, well... <clears throat> Sufi music is about uh, lessons, actually. I mean, Sufism is about lessons that we need to maybe acquire, mm -hmm. and and uh, it's it's text-based music uh, because right. it is all this poetry that uh, that you know the dervishes and and the wise men of Anatolia wrote uh, wrote down for us. They're centuries-old texts, and uh, the music is, has to be very simple just to convey the message that is in the text. And right. in a way, it's a very minimalistic uh, approach to making music. You know, it's not about making music with a lot of people, with, with, with complex ideas, but rather very simple uh, lessons that, that we need to acquire um, said, in, said in music. So it's vocal music with, with beautiful uh, accompaniment. Right. And um, I always liked uh, delicate things, you know, small things rather than large scale uh, uh, prestations in music, basically. That's mm -hmm. why I like playing by myself or just playing in small groups rather than orchestra. 
I didn't choose a career as an orchestra musician just because of that reason. Just because. Talking about small groups, uh, you worked with Shimde Ensemble on this album. What yes. was it like working with them? <laughs> well, it's an ensemble that we founded. Um, mm. uh, just a couple of friends, uh, namely Boro Imas, who is a wonderful singer and composer from Izmir. Turkey and um, he said oh let's just do simple things so he, he, he he's quite a specialist of, of this music Sufi music and he introduced me to it and um, as we went along um, we decided to invite a uh, French uh, musician into our uh, recording um, by the name of um, Michel Godard who is a wonderful tuba and serpent player it's an old uh, ancient instrument, right. and uh, so in a way, it's a it's an album with a with a little flair of uh, fusion, but not too much. I think that it has a good good basis in Turkey mm -hmm. with the tradition, but it's a, it's a proposal about what to make with Sufi music um, rather than just you know the, the channel of the tradition. Mm -hmm. So um, um, it was just wonderful uh, recording. It took us a whole year. Basically, oh yeah, yes. Right. <laughs> we went back and forth, back and forth, mm -hmm. and uh, just to find that right sound. But uh, being in the studio is always a lot of fun. It's it's a time where you create and you listen and you re-listen -re and you do other things over it. It's just the opposite of what you do in a performance, which is just spontaneous and just in the go. moment. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's no statistical <clears throat> data for this, but it's said that harpists live longer. Um, is it something to do with the power of music or is it something to do with the harp uh, mm. particularly? Do you find mm. that it's true? Mm. It is true, actually. I don't have statistical data <laughs> either, mm -hmm. but um, all my teachers have, have lived to be, uh, you know, around 90 years old or so. Oh, wow. And um, we know that it's documented in history as well. Um, I think that when we talk about the Western harp, uh, we look at the, 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 the harpists that represent the classical Western tradition, they, um, uh, the instrument requires so much coordination between the lower body and the upper body because there's the use of the pedals and, and uh, the instrument is large right. and you have to sort of mm -hmm. use both, both hands up and down and you have to coordinate, uh, uh, you know, the, the motor skills have to be really working well. Right. I think it kind of keeps you going, you know, it's a good exercise as well. I think that it keeps, it keeps people uh, going and also something about the sound because the sound is so pure and um, it's just like um, maybe the sound of water. So if mm -hmm. you're, um, you know, um, sort of lullabied with the, the sound of water all your life, right. I think that you get something from that. It's definitely a very, very soothing sound, yes, the, soo the sound of the harp. Mm -hmm. Well, you released an album at the start of this year. Uh, what else is going on for you this year? Hmm. Well, this year is um, concerts. Uh, um, Lot, lots of concerts with the Cheng, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes with just a, a singer accompanying a singer. Uh, sometimes as a trio, sometimes as a quartet. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it looks like we will be traveling in Singapore and China uh, quite a bit. Uh, we were already there uh, okay. a couple of months ago. And um, I'm writing down a method of, of uh, how to say this, traditional music for harp, basically. Traditional Turkish music right. for harp. So I'm working in this traditional area as well as the you know mainstream uh, Western repertoire, mm -hmm. and I try to sort of intertwine them. Intertwine uh, them. Yes, yes. So so kind of introduce maybe a new instrument into the uh, you know sphere of uh, Turkish music, mm -hmm. and also introduce some element of traditional uh, music a repertoire to Western harpists who want to you know take advantage advantage of this wonderful musical culture we have in Turkey. Definitely. It's uh, you know generations old and it's. Uh, infused with poetry and an and, 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 um, incredible amount of complexity as well. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Shirin Pandurola, for joining us on Showcase. Welcome.